Well, Mark took off for Alaska, huh? Yeah. So it left you in charge. Well, she knew I was coming down here, so she offered me a place. Keeping the plants going? Yeah. Keeping the sink clean? She don't even like a single tea leaf in the sink, you know. Yeah, I know. She gonna be up there a long time? I don't know. Kinda nice to you, huh? Old place to yourself. Yeah, it's great. You got crickets anyway. Tons of crickets out there. You got groceries? Copy? What? You got copy? Yeah. Real copy from the bean? Yeah, you want some? Nah, I bought some. Well, help yourself to whatever. I will. Don't worry about me. I'm not the one to worry about. I mean, I... You always work by candlelight? No, uh, not always. Just sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's soothing. You know what the old guys did? What old guys? The forefathers, you know? The forefathers? Yeah, and that what they did. Candlelight burning into the night. Cabins in the wilderness. I suppose. I'm not bothering you, am I? I mean, I don't want to break any concentration or nothing. No, it's all right. That's good. I mean, I realize your line of work demands a lot of concentration. It's okay. Probably don't think I'm fully able to comprehend something like that, huh? Like what? That stuff you do in that art, you know, what did you call it? Just a little research. May not know what I did in the lock myself once. You did? Yeah, I did some of that. Fooled around with it. No future. What did you do? Never mind what I did. Never mind about that. It's ahead of its time. So he went out to see the old man, huh? Yeah, I see. How's he doing? Same. Doing just about the same. Yeah, I was down there too, you know. What do you want, an award? You want some kind of medal? You were down there. He told me all about you. What did he say? He told me, don't worry. Well, you yes. don't have to say nothing. I wasn't. Yeah, you were going to make something up. Something breathing. Gonna be down here very long, Lee? Might be. Depends on a few things. Well, I got some friends down here. <laughs> I know a few people, yeah. Well, you can stay here as long as I'm here. I don't need your permission, do I? No. I mean, she's my mother too, right? Right. You could have just as easily asked me to take care of the place as you. That's right. I mean, I know how to water plants. So, you don't know how long you'll be staying then? Depends. Mostly on the houses, you know. Houses? Yeah, houses. Electrical devices, stuff like that. Gotta take me a little tour first. Lee, why don't you try another neighborhood, all right? What's the matter with this neighborhood? It's the great neighborhood. Lush, good class of people, not many dogs. <laughs> well, our. Uh... Our mother just happens to live here, that's all. No one's gonna know. All they're gonna know is something's missing, that's all. She won't even hear about it. No one's gonna know. You're gonna get picked up if you start walking around here at night. Me? I won't get picked up. What about you? Stick out like a sore thumb. Look at you. You think you're regular looking? Look, I got too much to deal with here. You're worrying about you. Why you don't have to worry about me. I can do all right without you. I mean, anywhere in need in five years. Now, ain't that true? Yeah. So don't worry about me. I'm a free agent. All right. Now all I want to do is borrow your car. No, just for a day, one day. No, I won't take it outside a 20 mile radius, I promise you. You can check the speed on it. You're not borrowing the car. That's all there is to it. You know, I'll just take the damn thing. Lee, look, I don't want any trouble, all right? Oh, that's a dumb line. That's a dumb fucking line. You get paid for dreaming up a line like that? Look, if you need some money, I can give you some money. Don't say that to me! Don't you ever say that to me! You might be dealing with the old man, getting taken up a week, buying off with your Hollywood blood money, but not me. I can make more money. More money. Big money. I was just making an offer? Yeah, well, keep it to yourself.
Those are the most monotonous fucking crickets I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I kind of like the sound. Yeah. You know you're supposed to be able to tell the temperature by the number of pulses? You believe that? Temperature? Yeah, yeah, how high it is. How do you do that? I don't know. Some woman told me that. She was a botanist, so I believe. Where'd you meet her? What? The woman botanist. I met her on the desert. We spend a lot of time on the desert. What were you doing out there? I forget. <laughs> Had me a pit bull there for a while. I lost it. A pit bull? Yeah, a fighting dog. Damn, I made some good money on that. It was all real good money. <laughs> You cooked up north with me, you know. What's up there? My family. Oh, that's right. You get the wife and the kiddies, man, don't you? You get the hat, you get the car, you get the whole thing. That's right. <laughs> it's been a couple days. See how you like it? I got an extra room. Yeah, it's too cold up there. Sleep for a while? I don't sleep. I never realized the old lady was so security minded. How do you mean? It took me a little tour this morning. She got locks on everything locks and double locks and chain locks. What she got was so valuable. Well, antiques, I guess. I don't know. Antiques! Brought everything with them from the old place, huh? Same crap we always had lying around. Plates and spoons. Well, I guess they have personal value to it. Personal value? Just a lot of junk, most of it's phony anyway. Idaho decals. Now who in the hell wants to eat off a plate with the state of Idaho staring you in the face? Every time you take a bite, you get to see a little more. <laughs> well, it must be something to her or she wouldn't save it. Yeah, well personally, I don't want to be invaded by Idaho when I'm eating. When I'm eating, I'm whole. You know what I'm saying? I'm not drifting, I'm whole. And I don't need my thoughts swept off to Idaho. I don't need that. Go out last night? Why? Oh, I thought I heard you go out. Yeah, I went out. What about it? I'm mm, just wondering. Them coyotes kept me awake. Oh, yeah, I heard them. They must have killed someone's dog or something. Yapping their fool heads off. You don't yap like that out in the desert. They howl. These are city coyotes here. Well, you don't sleep anyway, do you? You're pretty smart, ain't you? How do you mean? I mean, you never had any more in the bowl than I did. But here you are, getting invited into prominent people's houses, sitting around talking like you know something. They're not so prominent. The hell of a lot more prominent than the houses I get invited into. Well, you invite yourself. That's right, I do. In fact, I probably got a wider range of choices than you do, come to think of it. I wouldn't doubt it. In fact, I've been in some pretty classy places in my time. And I never went to an Ivy League school either. You want some breakfast or something? Breakfast? Yeah. Don't you eat breakfast? And don't worry about me, pal. I can take care of myself. You just go on as so old one in here, all right? Where'd you walk to last night? Up in the foothills there. In the San Gabriel's, the heat was driving me crazy. Well, wasn't it hot out in the desert? Different kind of heat. Out there, it's clean. It cools off at night. There's a nice little breeze. Where were you? The Mojave? Yeah, the Mojave, that's right. Oh, I haven't been out there in years. App, app past needles there. Oh, yeah. Up here it's different. This country's real different. Well, it's been built up. Built up? Why, that's more like I don't even hardly recognize it. Yeah, the foothills are the same though, aren't they? Pretty much. It's funny going up there. Smells and everything. 
Used to catch snakes up there, remember? You caught snakes. Yeah, you used to pretend you were Geronimo or some damn thing. You used to go right out to lunch. <laughs> well, I enjoyed my imagination. Is that what you call it? Looks like you're still enjoying it. So you're still wandering around up there, huh? Yeah. With a purpose. See any houses? Couple. Couple of real nice ones. One of them didn't even have a dog. Just walked straight up, stuck my head in the window, not a peep. Just a sweet kind of suburban silence. What kind of place was it? It was like a paradise. The kind of place that sort of kills you inside, you know? Warm yellow lights. Mexican tile all around. Copper pots hanging over the stove. You know like they got in magazines? Blind people moving in and out of rooms, talking to each other. <laughs> kind of place you wish you sort of grew up in, you know? That's the kind of place you wish you'd grown up in? Yeah, why not? Well, I thought you hated that kind of stuff. Well, you never knew too much about me, did you? Why'd you go out to the desert in the first place? I was on my way to see the old man. Well, he was passing through there. Yeah, three months of passing through. Three months? Maybe more, I don't know why. Well, you were on the Mojave for three months? Yeah, what's the matter with that? Well, by yourself. Well, mostly. I had a couple of visitors. I had that little dog for a while. Didn't you miss people? <laughs> people? Yeah. I mean, I'd go crazy if I had to spend three nights in a motel by myself. Well, you're not in a motel now, are you? No, I know, but sometimes I have to stay in motels. Well, they got people in motels, don't they? Strangers. They're friendly Asians. Ain't you the friendly type? I'm gonna be having someone coming by later, Lee. Uh-huh, lady friend. No, a producer. Uh-huh, what's he forgive? Film. Movies, you know. Movies? Motion pictures? Big week, huh? Yeah. What's he coming by here for? Let's talk about a project. What do you mean project? What's a project? A script. Oh, is that what you're doing with all these papers here, huh? Yeah. What's the project about? We're, um... No, it's a period piece. What's a period piece? Look, it doesn't matter. The main thing is, I need to discuss this with him alone. I mean, no... Uh, oh, I get it. You want me out of the picture, right? Well, not exactly. I just need to be alone with him for a couple of hours so we can talk. You're afraid I'll embarrass you. I'm not afraid you'll embarrass me. Tell you what, why don't you give me the keys to the car and I'll be back about six or so. Will that give you enough time? I'm not loaning you my car, Lee. All right, swim to get lost, huh? Take a hike, is that it? Pay on the pavement for a few hours while you bullshit your way into a million bucks. Look, it's going to be hard enough for me to face this character on my own without trying to do it. You don't know this guy? No, I don't know. Look, he's a producer. I've been meeting with him for months, but you never get to know a producer. You're trying to hustle him, is that it? I'm not trying to hustle him, I'm trying to work out a deal. It's not easy. What kind of deal? Convince him it's a worthwhile story. He's not convinced? How come he's coming over here if he's not convinced? I'll convince him for you. No, <laughs> you don't understand the way things work down here, Lee. How do things work down here? Look, if I loan you my car, would you have it back here by six? On the button, with a full tank of gas. Forget about the gas. Hey, you got your skull these days, old buddy. Hey, remember that car you used to lend you? Yeah. Forty four crackheads! Yeah. Suck a whole ass, dude. Lee, look, it's not that I don't want to loan you my car. Y'all loan me your car. I know. I just wish... What? You wish what? I don't know. I wish I wasn't... I wish I didn't have to be doing business down here. I'd like to just spend some time with you. Thought it was art you would do. Try to get it back here by six, okay? No sweat. Oh, hey, if that uh, story of yours doesn't go over with a guy, tell him I've got a couple of projects he might be interested in. Real commercial, full of suspense, true to life stuff.
Mr. Austin. I've never felt so confident about a project in quite a long time. Oh, that's good to hear, Saul. I'm absolutely convinced we can get this thing off the ground. I mean, we'll have to make a sale of television. That means getting a major star, somebody bankable. But I think we can do it. I really do. You don't think we need a first draft before we approach a star? No, no, not at all. I don't think it's necessary. Maybe a brief synopsis. I don't want you to touch the typewriter until we have some seed money. That's fine with me. I mean, it's a great story. Just the story alone. You really managed to capture something this time. I'm glad you like it, Saul. Oh, shit. Shit, I'm sorry, Austin. I really am sorry. Oh, it's all right. I suppose we passed it already. You seem to have a factory by six. Yeah, we're just finishing up. Uh, this is my uh, brother, Lee. Oh, I'm very happy to meet you. I can't tell you how happy I am to meet you, sir. Saul Kimmer. Mr. Kipper. Kimmer. Oh. Uh, Lee's been living out of desert for a while. Oh, oh that's terrific. Uh, Palm Springs? Yeah, yeah, around that area. Out in the Bob Hope Drive there. Oh, I love it out there. I just love it. The air is wonderful. Yeah, it sure is. It's healthy. And the golf. I don't know if you play any golf, but golf's just about the best. I play a lot of golf. Is that right? As a matter of fact, I was hoping I'd run into somebody out here playing a little golf. I've been looking for a partner. Wow. Oh, this is down for a little visit while my mother's in Alaska. Your mother's in Alaska? Yeah, she went up here on a little vacation. This is her place. I see. Well, isn't that some Alaska? What <laughs> kind of handicap you on, Mr. Kim? Oh, I'm just a Sunday duffer, really. You know. Well, that's good because I haven't swum a club in months. Oh, well, maybe we ought to get together and have a little game. Austin, do you play? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I watch it on TV. Hey, what about tomorrow morning? Bright and early. We can get out there and put in any holes before breakfast. Well, uh, I have several points. No, I mean real early. Crack the door while the dew is still thick on the fairway. <laughs> that was really great. Austin could be our caddy. Oh, now that's an idea. <laughs> I know the first thing about golf. I have nothing to it. in that right, so we pick it up in 15 minutes. Sure, it doesn't take long. Well, it takes years to find a true form. Yeah. We'll give you a run down the club faces, the eyes, the woods, show you a couple points on the basic swing. Might even let him hit a ball a couple of times. What do you think, so? Oh, I know. I think it'd be great. I haven't had any exercise in weeks. That's a spurt. Oh, and we can have some orange juice straight afterwards. Orange juice? Yeah, vitamin C! Nothing like a shot of orange juice after winning the golf. Hot chowders. Snapping towels at each other's privates, real sense of fraternity. Yeah, you make it sound very inviting, I must say. It really does sound great. Bring it to date? Oh, I'll call the credit card, see if we're going to raise something. Oh, great! Oh, boy, I, I sure am sorry for busting in on you all. Ah, oh, that's quite all right. We were just about finished anyway. I can wait for you in the room if you want. Oh, really? I just got Austin's color TV out of the shop. I can watch a little amateur boxing there. Oh, yeah. You, uh, fool around television, do you saw? Uh, well, I have in the past. Produce some TV specials, network stuff. It's mainly features now. That's where the big money is, huh? That's right. Uh, why don't we get cold for so we'll get together. We can uh, have lunch or something. That'd be terrific. Right after the golf. What? You can have lunch right after the golf. Oh, yeah. Austin was telling me you were interested in stories. Uh, we develop certain projects we feel have commercial potential. You know what kind of stuff you go in for? Ah, uh, the usual. You know, good love interests, lots of action. Westerns? Sometimes. Uh, I'll give you a ring, I've got a Western that'll knock your eyes out. Oh, really? Contemporary Western, based on a true story. Of course, I'm not a writer like my brother here. <laughs> not a man of the pain. Well, I lost it. I mean, I can tell the story off the tongue. I just can't get a damn beat. That doesn't make no difference, so does it? No, oh, not really. I mean, there must be lots of kinds of stories. True to life story. There must be a hell of a lot of movies made from real life. Yes, I suppose so. You know, I haven't seen a good Western since Lonely All the Brave. You remember that movie? No, I'm afraid I don't. Kirk Douglas, have a movie! You remember that movie, Austin? Yes. Man dies for the love of his horse. Is that right? Yeah. You, you, you hear the horse screaming at the end of it? Rain's coming down, horse is screaming. Then there's a shot. Bam! See a shot like that and nothing. But the sound of rain. And Kirk Douglas is riding in the ambulance, riding away from the scene of the accident. And when he hears that shot, he knows his horse has died. He knows! And you see his eyes, and his eyes die and rot inside his face. And then his eyes close, and you know that he's died too. You know that Kirk Douglas has died from the death of his horse. 
Wow, it sounds like a great movie. <laughs> sorry, I missed it. Yeah, you should have missed that one. Well, I have to try to catch it sometime. Ranger screaming or something. Well, Austin, I'm going to hit the freeway before I rush out. It's good seeing you, Saul. Don't you think there's room for real western these days? Huh? Don't you lie for this? I don't see why not. What is your... Tell it to Austin here. I've been ready to let line. You have a look at your thing? Sure, I'll give it a read through. Always eager for new material. Great, but did you really read it, huh? That'd just be my opinion, of course. Oh, that's what I want. Just an opinion. I happen to think it's got a lot of possibilities. Wow, it's been great to meet you. Yeah, and I'll call you tomorrow back to golf. Oh, yes. Austin's got the number, right? Yes. So long, so all. Give me the keys. All right, now read it back to me. I'm not reading it back to you, Lee. You read it when we're finished. I can't spend all night on this. You have better things to do? Let's just go ahead. Now, what happens when he leaves Texas? You ready to leave Texas yet? He I didn't know where that far along. He's not ready to leave Texas. Well, he's right at the border. No, it's one of those crucial parts right here. He can't run through this. He's not right at the border. He's a good 50 miles from the border. Now, a lot can happen in 50 miles. It's only an outline. We're not writing an entire script no, now. It doesn't matter, even if it is only an outline. You can't go leaving that out. It's one of the most important parts. You can't leave that out. Okay, okay. Let's just get it done. All right. Now, he's in the truck, and he's got his horse trailer, and his horse. Yes, we've already established that. And sees this other guy coming up behind him in another truck. And that truck is full of a gooseneck. What's a gooseneck? It's a cattle trail. You know, a cow with a gooseneck sits right down in the bed of a pickup. Oh, all right. No, it's important. Okay, I've got it. No, all these details are important. I've got it. <coughs> and, and this other guy's got his horse all saddled up in the back of the gooseneck. Right. So, both these guys got their horses right along with them. See? I understand. Yeah. And then the first guy. Suddenly realizes two things. What, the guy in front? Yeah, the guy in front realizes two things. Almost at the same time. Simultaneous. What were the two things? Well, number one, he realizes that the guy behind him is the husband of the woman he's been... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and number two, he realizes he's in the middle of a tornado country. <laughs> What's tornado country? Panhandle. Panhandle? Sweet water around that area. Nothing. Nowhere. And number three. But there are only two. There's three. There's a third unforeseen realization. And what's that? That he's running out of gas! <laughs> Come on, Lee. Come on, that's what it is. Ride it down. He's rolling out of gas. Right, it's too uh, no, too real. That's what you mean. It's too much like real life. It's not like real life. It's not enough like real life. Things don't happen like that. What? Men don't force other men's women? Yes, but they don't end up chasing each other across a panhandle through tornado country. We do in this movie, and they don't have horses conveniently along with them when they run out of gas. And they don't run out of gas either. These guys run out of gas. It's my story, and one of these guys run out of gas. It's just a dumb excuse to get them into a chase scene. It's contrived. It is a chase scene. It's already a chase scene. They've been chasing each other for days. So now they're supposed to abandon their trucks and climb on their horses and chase each other into the mountains? There ain't any mountains in the panhandle. It's flat. God damn these crickets! Come up out of here! There's like a fucking restroom here. How are you supposed to think? You want to take a break? No, I don't take a break. I want to get this thing done. All right, take it easy. I'm going to leave this area. Don't have time to mess around here. Where are you going? Never mind, I'm going. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got to finish this thing up. Not like you. Sitting around, being a parasite of other fools. It's got to finish this thing up and get out. A parasite. Me? Yeah, you. After you break into people's houses and take their television, they don't need their television, I'm doing them a service. So I look give me back my keys. You're going to you write this thing. You're going to write this outline thing or that car's going to wind up in Arizona with a different paint job. 
Don't you think you can force me to write this thing? I was doing you a favor. Oh, get up your house with your favor, big favor. Handing down favors from the man talk. But let's just write it, okay? Let's just sit down and knock it up, Sid, and see if we can just get through this. You're not even going short to him, are you? What? This outline thing. You got no intention of showing it to him. You're only doing it because you're afraid of me. You can show it to him yourself. How do you, boy? How do you do it on the golf course? <laughs> and I'm not afraid of you either. So how come you're doing it? So I can get my keys back. Keys back. Go ahead, there your keys. What are you going to do now? Kick me out? Oh, I'm not going to kick you out, Lee. You couldn't kick me out, boy. No. Couldn't even consider that, man. You call the police. That'd be the obvious thing to do. You're my brother. That don't make no difference. You go down the LA police department and you ask what kind of people kill each other most. What do you think they say? Who said anything about killing many people? Brothers! Brothers! They kill each other in the heat mostly. In the smaller world, the birth fire season. Right around this time of year. This isn't the same. Oh no? Well, it makes it different. We're not insane. We're not driven to acts of violence like that. Not over a dumb movie script. Now sit down. <clears throat> Maybe not. Maybe you're right. Maybe we're too intelligent, huh? We got our heads on our shoulders. One of us has even got an I believe diploma. Now that means something, don't it? Don't that mean something? Look, I'll write this thing for you, Lee. I don't mind writing it. I just don't want to get all worked up about it. It's not worth it. Now, come on. Let's just get through it, okay? No, I think there's easy money. Lots of places I can pick up thousands, maybe millions. I don't need this shit. I can head up to Sacramento Valley and steal me a diesel. Ten thousand dollars a week, this man, and one of those suckers. Ten thousand a week. No, really, look, I'll write it after I think it's a great idea. Nah, you got your own work to do. I, I don't want to interfere with your life. I mean, it'd be really fantastic if you could sell this thing, turn it into a movie. I mean it. You think so, huh? Well, absolutely. I mean, you could really turn your life around, you know? Change things. I could get me a house, maybe? Sure, to get a house. You get a whole ranch if you want. What? A ranch? I could get a ranch? Of course you could. No, a screen place house for these days? No, what's the sale for? A lot. A whole lot of money. Thousands? Yeah, thousands. Millions? Well, hey, okay. we could get the old man out of hop, then. Maybe. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Oh, it might take more than money, that's all. But you just said it was going to change my whole life, man. Why wouldn't it change him? He's different. Oh. He's of a different ilk, huh? He's not going to change. Let's leave the old man out of it. That's right. He's not going to change. But I will, right? I'm just going to turn myself right inside out. I could be just like you, man. <laughs> Sitting around, dreaming stuff up. Getting paid to dream, just riding back and forth on the freeway, just dream my fool head off. It's not all that easy. It's not, huh? No, there's a lot of work involved. What's your toughest part? Deciding whether the job or play tennis. Well, look. You can stay here, do whatever you want to. Borrow the car, come in and have this man to be at my house. I'll help you write this thing or not. Just let me know what you want. You tell me. Oh, so suddenly you're in my service. Is that it? What do you want to do, Lee? Tell you what I'd do if I still had that little dog. You want to know what I did?
Watch. Head up the Venturi. Cook me up a little match. God, that little doggy could bear down. <laughs> Love and money is all fighting. Big money. Why don't we try to see this thing truly? Well, just for the hell of it. I mean, maybe you've really got something here. What do you think? to be you. You did? Yeah, I used to picture you walking around some campus, some place, your arms full of books, blondes chasing after you. Blondes? Oh, that's funny. Wow, what's funny about it? Well, I always used to picture you somewhere. Yeah? Where'd you picture me? Oh, I don't know, different places and adventures. You were always on some adventure. Yeah! And I'd say to myself, Lee's got the right idea. I mean, he's out there in the world, and here am I. What am I doing? Well, you, you were just setting yourself up to something. Well, I guess. We better start on this thing. Okay. Oh, can I get the keys before I forget? No. See, I, I can have the keys to the car if I want to, right? You know what you said? Yeah, sure. I can get in your range, huh? Yeah, we have to write it first, though. All right, let's write it. So, they take off after each other, straight into an endless black prairie. The sun's just coming down, and they can feel the night on their backs. But what they don't know is, each one of them is afraid, see? Each one of them certainly thinks he's the only one that's afraid. And they keep riding like that, straight into the night, not knowing. And the one who's chasing, he doesn't know where the other one's taking him. And the one who's being chased, he doesn't know where he's going. He wouldn't have given me the clubs if he didn't like it. He gave you the clubs? Yeah, I told you he'd give me the clubs. The bag, too. I thought he just loaned them to you. No, I said it was part of the advance. Little gift like. Jester of his good faith. He's giving you an advance? Yeah, what's so amazing about that? I told you it was a good story. Even you said it was a good story. Well, that is really incredible, Lee. I mean, do you know how many guys spend their whole lives down just trying to get into this business? Just trying to get in the door. No idea how many. <laughs> how much of an advantage is it giving you? Plenty. We're talking big money out there. Now I told you before I see you the deal. You made a firm commitment. Absolutely. Well, I know Saul, he doesn't fool around when he says he likes something. Thought you said you didn't know him. Well, I'm familiar with his tastes. I let him get too up in me going into the back nine. He was sure he had me cold. You should have seen his face when I pulled out the other boots and wedge and plopped it. Pin high, two feet from the cup. <laughs> he about shit his pants. Where the guy like you ever learn to play a guy like that, he says. <laughs> Of course, there's no contract yet. Nothing's final until it's on paper. No, oh, it's final, all right. There's no way he's going to back out of it now. We gambled for it. Saul gambled? Yeah, we liked the outline already, so it wasn't risking that much. I just guaranteed it with my short game. Well, we should celebrate or something. I think Mom had the bottle of champagne in the refrigerator. We could have a little toast. She'd know to take the champagne off and she's going to miss that. Ah, oh, she's not going to mind. She'll be glad to put it to some good use. I'll get her another bottle. Besides, it's perfect for the occasion. You're going to get a nice fee for writing the script, of course. Straight fee. Well, I'm writing the script? That's what he said. 
Said we couldn't hire a better screenwriter in the whole town. But I'm already working on a script. I got my own project. I don't have time to write two scripts. No, I said it's gonna drop that other one. <laughs> what? You mean mine? He's gonna drop mine and do yours instead? Well, look, Austin, it's just beginner's luck. Besides, I said the 50-foot perk of the steel. No hard feelings. He's not gonna be in, Austin. Said he wouldn't be in till late this afternoon. Can't believe it. Just can't believe it. Are you sure he said that? Why would he drop mine? That's what he told me. What well, he can't do without telling me, without talking to me first, he wouldn't just make a decision like that without talking to me. You know, and I was kind of surprised myself. But he was really enthusiastic about the story. What did he say? Tell me everything he said. I've been telling you about the story a whole lot. It was the first authentic question to come along in a decade. He liked that story? Your story? Yeah. What's the reason about that? It's stupid. It's the dumbest story I've ever heard in my life. Hey, now hold on. That's my story you're talking about there. Now, it's a bullshit story. It's idiotic. Two lame brains chasing each other across Texas. Now, who do you think's gonna go see a film like that? It's not a film. It's a movie. There's a big difference. That's what it's all told me. Oh, we did, huh? Yeah, he said, in this business, we make movies. American movies. You can leave the films to the French. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got real into it with old Saul, huh? He started pouring forth his vast knowledge of cinema. I think he liked me a lot, to tell you the truth. I think he thought I was somebody he could confide in. No, what did you do? Beat him up or something? Hey, I think about how to be so funny. You think he's the only one to bring the pop in here, huh? The only one that can sit around and cook things up? Other people got ideas too, you know. We must have done something, threatened him or something. Now what did you do, Lee? I convinced him! Jesus. You didn't hurt him, did you? Lee! Did you hurt him? story, pure and simple. So it was the best story to come along in a, in a long, long time. That's what he said about my story. That's the same thing he said to me. Well, he must have been lying. He must be lying to one of us anyway. You can't come into the town and start pushing people around. They're going to put you away. I never pushed anyone around. I beat him fair and square. It can't touch me anyway. Can't lay a finger on me. I'm gone. I come in through the window, go out through the door. They never knew I hit him. You! You're the one who said <laughs> Not me. So don't be worrying me what to do in this town. Lee, come on. Level with me, will you? It just doesn't make any sense to suddenly he'd throw my idea out the window. I've been talking to him for months. I got too much at stake. Everything is riding on this project. All right. What's your idea? It's just a simple love story. What kind of love story? I'm not telling you! Ha ha! Three dollars steal it, huh? This is getting a little too close to home, isn't it? Where the salt he was going? He's going to take my story around the couple studios. That's my outline. I wrote that out, and you got no right to be piddling around. We're ready to take the credit for it last night. Well, give me the keys back. <laughs> the keys! Give me the keys! Where are you going? Just give me the keys! I gotta take a drive. I gotta get out of here for a while. Where are you going to go, Austin? <laughs> <coughs> I might just drive out to the desert for a while. I gotta think. You can think just as good here. This is the perfect setup for thinking. No one we get some rotten to do here, boy. <laughs> Just have us a little toast. Relax. We're partners now. <laughs> now you tell him. You, Kimber. Kimber. Kimber, tell him what you told me. You don't believe me. I'd rather hear it, okay? It's really not a big issue, Austin. I was simply amazed by your brother's Amazed? Opinion. You lost a bet. You gambled with my material. That's really beside the point, Austin. I'm ready to go all the way with your brother's story. I think it has a great deal of merit. I don't want to hear about it, okay? Don't tell it to the executives. Tell it to somebody who's going to turn it into a package deal, a TV series. Don't tell it to me. But I want to continue with your project too, Austin. Notice that we can't do both. We're big enough for that, aren't we? We? 
I can't do both. I don't know about the See, what did I tell you? He's totally unsympathetic. Austin, there's no point in our going to another screenwriter for this. It just doesn't make sense. You're brothers! You know each other! There's a familiarity with the material that just wouldn't be possible otherwise! There's no familiarity with the material. None. I don't know what the panhandle is. I don't know what a gooseneck is. I don't want to know! He's a hustler. He's a bigger hustler than you are, and you can't step with Hey, now, hold on! I didn't have to bring this bone back to you, boy. I persuaded Sol here that you were the right man for the job. So don't be throwing favors up in my face. Savers, I love the fucking outline! You can't even spell. Your brother told me about the situation with your father. What? That's right. Now we have a clear-cut deal here, Austin. We got big studio money standing behind this thing, just on the basis of your outline. What did he tell you about my father? Oh, that he's destitute. He needs money. That's right, he does. And this little assignment is supposed to go toward the old man? A charity project? Is that what this is? Did you cook this up on the night green as well? A big slice, Austin. I gave him money, you know that. I already gave him money. He drank it all up. Just the different kind of deal. We can here. set up a trust for your father. A large sum of money it can be doled out to him in parcel, so he can't misuse it. Yeah? And who's doing the doling? Oh, your brother volunteered. Yeah, well, I'll make sure you slip the groceries. I'm not doing this script. I'm not writing this crap for you or anybody else. You can't blackmail me into it. You can't threaten me into it. There's no way I'm doing it. So just give up. Both of you. Well, that's it then. I mean, this is an easy 300 grand. Just for the first draft. It's incredible. We've got three different studios all trying to cut each other's throat to get this material. In one morning. That's how hard it is. Yeah? Well, if you can afford to give me a percentage of the outline, then, and you better get the genius here in agent before he gets burned. So, who will be my agent in that rock song? That's right. And your brother's really got something, Austin. I've been around too long not to recognize him. <coughs> Raw talent. He's got a lot of balls. That's what he's got. He's taking you right down the river. 300,000, Austin, just for the first draft. Now, you've never been over that kind of money before. I'm not writing a team. I see. Well, they just... Burgess, have to hire us another screenwriter, right, Saul? Hire somebody with a little enthusiasm. Somebody who can appreciate the value of a good story. Oh, really sorry about this, Austin. Yeah. I mean, I was hoping we could continue both things, but now I don't see how it's possible. So you're dropping my idea altogether. Is that it? Just trade horses in midstream? After all these months of meetings? I wish there was another way. I've got everything writing on this song, now you know that. It's my only shot. If this falls through, I don't know what my instincts come from. Your instincts! I got reaction! You're lost! That's your gut reaction. You lost a gamble. Now you're trying to tell me that you like the story? How could you possibly fall for that story? It's as phony as Hopalong Cassidy. What do you see in it? I'm curious. It has the ring of truth, Arsenal. <laughs> truth. It is true. It's only about the real West. Why? Because it's got horses? Because it's got grown men acting like little boys? Yeah, think about the land. Your brother is speaking from experience. So am I. Well, nobody's interested in love these days, Austin, let's face it. That's right. <laughs> He's been camped out on the desert for three months talking to cactus. <laughs> What does he know about what people want to see on the screen? I drive on the freeway every day. I swallow the smart. I watch the used in car. I shop in the same way. I know I was in touch. Not him. I have to go now, Austin. There's no such thing as the West anymore. It's a dead issue. That's dry out, Slow. And so are you. Maybe you're right. But I have to take a gamble, darn. You were a fool to do this, Saul. I've always gone with my hunches. Always. I've never been wrong. Talk to you tomorrow, Lee. All right, Mr. Kieran. Maybe we could have some lunch? Fine, Bobby. I'll give you a ring. <laughs>
Please carry my loved one home safely to me. The red sails in the sunset. Hey, knock me off! I'm trying to concentrate here. You're trying to concentrate? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now you're trying to concentrate. Between you, the coyotes, and the crickets, I thought there wasn't much of a change. Between me, the coyotes, and the crickets. What a great title. I don't need a title, I need a thought. A thought? He is a thought for you. I'm not asking for your affairs. I got my own. I could do this on my own. You're going to write an entire script on your own? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he is a thought for you. Oh, Kimmer. Shut up! Will you? <laughs> he thinks we're the same person. Don't get cute. He does. He's lost his marbles, poor old soul. He thinks we're one and the same. Why don't you ease up on that champagne? Is this a champagne anymore? We went through the champagne a long time ago. This is serious stuff. The days of champagne a long, long time. Well, go outside and drink it. I'm enjoying your company, Lee. For the first time since your arrival, I am actually enjoying your company. And now you want me to go outside and drink alone? That's right. You think you make more progress if you're by yourself? You might drive yourself crazy. I could get this thing done in a night if I had a little size. Well, you'd still have the crickets to contend with. A coyotes. The sound of a police helicopter prowling about the neighborhood, slashing their searchlights down to the streets, hunting for the likes of you. I'm a screenwriter now. I'm a kid. <laughs> a screenwriter? That's right. I'm on salary. It's more like I can say for you. I got an advance coming. This is true. This is very true. An advance. Well, Maybe I ought to go out and try my hand at your trade, since you're doing so good at mine. Huh? Well, why not? You don't think I've got what it takes to sneak into someone's house and steal a television? You couldn't steal a toaster without losing your lunch. <laughs> you don't think I could sneak into someone's house and steal a toaster? Well, why don't you take a shower or something, will you? You don't think I could steal a crummy toaster? How much you want to bet I can't steal a toaster, huh? How much? You're a gambler, aren't you? How much are you willing to put on the line, huh? Some part of your big advance? Oh, you haven't got that yet, have you? I forgot. I'll bet you, I'll bet you, you call me. I can't steal a toaster without, without getting busted. You already got my car. I'll pay okay, your house name. What are you going to give me? I'm not talking about my house and my car. I'm talking about what are you going to give me? You ain't got nothing to give me. I'll give you shared screen credit. Huh? How about that, huh? I'd have to put in the contract that this was written by the both of us. I don't want my name on that piece of shit. I want something of value. Got anything of value, huh? Any tidbits from the desert? Any rattlesnake bones? I'm not a greedy man. Any little personal treasure will suffice. Well, I'll kick your ass out in a minute. Ooh, 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 so now I'm the intruder, huh? Now I'm the one who's invading your precious privacy. I've got to do some screenwriting here! <laughs> well, you got everything you need. You got groceries, coffee, you got a car, and a contract. <laughs> Might need a new typewriter ribbon, but apart from that, you're pretty well fixed. <laughs> I'll just leave you alone for a little while. Where are you going? Don't worry about me. I'm not the one to be worried about. What are you going to do? Just want to into the night? I'm going to make a little tour. Why don't you just go to bed for Christ's sake? You're making me sick. I can take care of myself. Don't worry about me. You want me to call your wife for you or something? My wife? Yeah, maybe she can help you and talk to you some. No, she's 500 miles away. North. North of here. Up in the north country where things are calm. I don't want any help. I want to go outside and I'm going to steal a toaster. I might even steal some other stuff, too. I might even commit bigger crimes. 
bigger than you ever dreamed of. Crimes beyond the imagination. Now, hang on a minute, Austin. Why? What for? Don't need my help, right? You got a hand on the project. <laughs> Besides, I'm looking forward to the smell of the night. Yeah, the bushes. Orange blossoms. Dust in the driveways. Rainbird sprinkles. And the lights in people's houses. <coughs> You're right about the lights, Lee. Everybody else is living the life. Safe. Indoors. It's a paradise down here, you know that? We're living in a paradise. We've forgotten about that. You sound just like the old man, now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all sort of sound alike when we're sloshed, you know, we just sort of Echo each other. Hey, <laughs> maybe if we could work on this thing together, we could bring him back out here. Get him settled down someplace. No! I don't want him out here! I got it with him! I went all the way out there! I went out of my way! I gave him money! All he did was play Al Johnson records and spit at me! I gave him money! Just told you a little with the characters, all right? You know how to do it, Austin. Oh, the characters? You know, you know, the way they talk and stuff. I, I can hear it in my head. I just can't get it down on paper. What characters? The guys! The guys in the story! Oh, those aren't characters. Who would it be called? Cool? I need to write something down. Oh, those are illusions of characters. I don't do a damn what you call You know what I'm talking about. Those are fantasies of a long-lost boyhood. I need to write some that! What for? So I'll also get you a fancy screenwriter, isn't he? I'm going to do it myself. Then do it! You're on your own now, old buddy. You bulldogged your way into contention, and now you've got to carry it through. I will! Just need some advice, that's all. A couple of things. Just help me get them talking right, Austin. It don't take much. Aw, oh, you're having a little doubt, are you? What happened? Pressure's on now, boy. This is it. You're gonna come up with it. You don't come up with a winner your first time out, then it's cut your head off. He don't give you a second chance, you know. It's a good story. I know it's a good story. I just need a little help, is all. Well, not from me. Not from your little old brother. I'm retired. You can see if it's safe, old Austin. I'll give you half the money. How mm. will well, I need half anyway? With this kind of money, I could be a long time down the road. I never bother you again. I promise you'd never even see me again. You disappear? I would be sure. Where would you disappear to? Well, it don't matter. I, I got plenty of places. Nobody can disappear. The old man tried that before he got him. He lost his teeth. He never had any money. I don't mean that. I mean his teeth. His real teeth. First he lost his real teeth, then he lost his false teeth. <laughs> you never knew about that, did you? Never confided in you. No, I never knew that. You want a drink? Yeah, he lost his real teeth one at a time. Woke up every morning with another tooth lying on the mat. So finally, he decides he's going to get them all pulled out, but he doesn't have any money. Middle of Arizona, with no money and no insurance, and every morning another tooth lying on the mattress. <laughs> so what does he do? I don't know. I don't even knew about it. He begs the government. GI Bill or some damn thing. Some pension plan remembers in the back of his head. And they're sending out the money. They did? Yeah. They sent in the money, but it's not enough money. It costs a lot to have all your teeth in. They charge by the individual tooth, you know. I mean, one tooth isn't equal to another tooth. Some are more expensive, like the big ones at the back. Oh, that's what happened. So he locates a Mexican dentist in Juarez and do the whole thing for a song. And he takes off hitchhiking for the border. Hitchhiking? Yeah. So how long do you think it takes him to get there? A man at his age. I don't know. Eight days it takes him. Eight days in the rain and the sun and every day he's dropping teeth on the blacktop and nobody will pick him up because his mouth's full of blood. <clears throat> so 
finally stumbles into the dentist. The dentist takes all his money and all his teeth. And there he is, in Mexico, with his gum sewed up and his pockets empty. Is that it? So I, I go out to see him. I go out there and I take him out for a nice Chinese dinner. <laughs> what he does not eat? All he wants to do is drink martinis out of plastic cups. And he takes his teeth out and he lays them on the table because he can't stand the feel of them. And we ask the waitress, one of those doggy bags, to take the chopped suey home in. So he takes his teeth and he drops them in the doggy bag along with the chopped suey. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to hit all the bars up and down the highway. He says he wants to introduce me to all of his buddies. And in one of those bars, in one of those bars up and down the highway, he left that doggy bag with his teeth flying <laughs> in the truck. So he never found it. We went back, but we never did find it. Now that's a true story. True life. Psychology, not the thing of the victims. What victims? The victims of crime, a break in and entering. I mean, is it a prerequisite for a criminal not to have a conscience? Ask the criminal. <laughs> what are you going to do with all those toasters? It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. I got hundreds of dollars worth of household appliances here. You may not realize. Yeah, and how many houses of dollars worth? You walk right past. So the only toasters you challenge me to. Oh, the only toasters I ignore every other temptation. I never challenged you that. No challenge anybody can steal a toaster. <laughs> you don't have to take it out on my typewriter, you know. I mean, it's not the machine's fault that you can't write. It's a sin to do that to a good machine. A sin? Yeah, when you consider all the writers who never even had a machine, who would have given an eyeball for a good typewriter. Any typewriter! Uh, all the ones who wrote on matchbook covers, on paper bags, on toilet paper, who had their writings destroyed by their jailers, who persisted beyond all the odds. Those writers are quite hard to understand your actions. <laughs> Not to mention demolishing a perfectly good golf club. Well, all the struggling golfers. What about Lee Trevino? What do you think he would have said when he was batting balls on a bruises at the age of nine, impoverished? What time was it in? No idea. Time stands still when you're having fun. Was it too late to call a woman? You know any women? I'm a married man. No, I mean a local woman. Well, it's either too early or too late. You're the nature enthusiast. Can't you tell the time by the light in the sky, huh? Or let yourself around the North Star or something? I can't tell anything. Well, maybe need a little breakfast. Some toast! How about some toast? I don't need toast, I need a woman. Woman isn't the answer, never was. I'm not talking about permanent, I'm talking about temporary. We'll just test the merits of these little demons. <laughs> See which brands have a tendency to burn? And see which one can produce a perfectly golden piece of fluffy toast. How much gas you got in the car? I haven't driven my car for days now, so I have not had an opportunity to look at the gas gauge. And take a guess, you think there's enough gas to get me to Bakersfield? Bakersfield? What's in Bakersfield? Never mind what's in 
bait to see you think there's enough goddamn gas in the car. Sure. Sure. Couldn't care less, right? Just let me roll out of gas in the white bond. You couldn't give a shit. I'll tell you, enough gas to get to you about anywhere. Leave with your guts and determination. What the hell time is it anyway? Very early. This is the time of morning when coyotes kill people's kind of spaniels. <laughs> Did you hear them? That's what they were doing out there. Luring innocent pets away from their homes. What's the error code for Bakersfield, you know? I know it's called the operator. Oh, no, I can't stand that voice they give you. <laughs> voice, you know that voice that warns you. If you only try harder to find a number in the phone book, you wouldn't have to be called the operator. <laughs> well, I don't understand why you want to talk to anybody else anyway. I mean, you can talk to me. I'm your brother. I want to talk to a woman. I haven't heard a woman's voice in a long time. Not since the botanist? Well, nothing. <laughs> Third set was on a sunset. Only I don't know who is carrying my loved one home safely to me. Third set on a sunset. Hey, now get out of here. This is long distance here. Bakersfield? Yeah, Bakersfield. It's Kern King. What town are we in? You better get yourself a seven up, boy. Mm -hmm. One town is as good as another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hopper! Look up. First off, I, I want to know the other code for Big Steve. Mm -hmm. Right, Big Steve. Okay, good. Now, I want to know if you can help me track somebody down. No, no, phone number. Just a phone number. Okay, okay, uh, uh, the name is Melly Ferguson. Melly. I don't know. Melly. Maybe. Yeah, maybe Melly. Yeah! Melly Ferguson! Okay! What? No, no, I, I can't hear you so good. You sound like you're under the ocean. You got ten and only Fergusons. How could that be? Ten and only Fergusons in Bakersfield? Look, give me all of them, Miz. <laughs> what do you mean? Give me all ten and only Fergusons. That's right. Hang on a minute. Give me a pen. Another pen. Well, give me a pencil then. Another pencil. Hang on a minute, operator. You're a writer and you don't have a pen or a pencil? I'm not a writer. You're a writer. I'm on the phone here. Get me a pen or a pencil. What's the toast? <laughs> so last time I tried to listen to these boys, I can't believe it. Here I am. Here I am again in a desperate situation. This would never happen out on the desk. I would never be in this kind of situation out on the desk. Isn't there a pen or a pencil in this house? Who is in this house anyway? My mother. She got a pen and a pencil? She's a social person. She don't just have to make out the top of the list. She's got to have a pencil. Ah! I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's 
not consider making you a deal. A little trade. You wrap me up this sweet little thing just like I tell you. I mean you can use all the usual tricks and stuff. Your fancy language, your artistic hocus pocus. But you gotta write everything just like I say. Every move. Every time they run out of gas, they run out of gas. And every time they jump on a horse, they do just that. And if they want to stay in Texas, then by God, they stay in Texas! And you finish the whole thing up on it. Top to bottom. And you put my name on it. And I own all the rights. And every dime goes into my pocket. You do all that. Sure enough, I'll take you with me to the desert. How's that sound? You 
It's a deal. Just a second. No, just read what you got. I can't keep up. Is that the same as if I had a typewriter, you know? what you got so far. Forget about the rest. Okay. Uh, Luke says... Luke? Yeah. Oh, his name's Luke? All right, we can change the names later. What's he say? Come on, come on. Why? Uh, he says, uh, I told you a fool to follow me in here. I know this prairie like the back of my hand. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. I never said that. Well, that's what I wrote. That's not what I said. I never said like the back of my hand. That's one of those, uh, what do you call that? What do you call that? What? What do you call that when, when someone's been said a thousand times before? What do you call that? Um, a cliche? Yeah! That's what it is. It's a cliche. The back of my hand, that's stupid. That's what you said. I never said that! And even if I did, that's where you're supposed to come in. That's where you're supposed to change it into something better. How am I supposed to do that? And right down just say at the same time. You just do that. So you hear a dumb lie like that, you change it. That's your job. All right. What are you changing it to? I'm not changing it. I'm just trying to catch up. Well, you gotta change that. You can't go leaving that in there like that at the back of my hand. That's dumb. All right. What are we gonna change it to? Uh, how about, um... <laughs> I'm on intimate terms with this prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on intimate terms with this prayer. Intimate terms. Intimate terms. Intimate, that means like sexual, don't it? Well, yes. What? Well, You're on sexual terms with a prairie? How you figure that? Doesn't necessarily have to mean sexual. Well, what do you mean then? I can mean close or personal. Oh, 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 let's see how it sounds. Put it back in the, in, in the line there. Read it back to me. See how it sounds. Intimate terms. All right. It goes something like this. I told you a fool to follow me in here. I'm on intimate terms with this prairie. <laughs> That's good, I like that, that's real good. Dude, yeah. Don't you? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Sounds original now. In the mature, that's got a real ring to it. Now they cut me. He's on in the mature for this prayer. <laughs> Sounds real mysterious, man. We're kind of threatening at the same time. Yeah. Now. Mom. <laughs> Ma, what are you doing back? I'm back? Hey, you need to let me get those for you, Ma. I wasn't expecting you back so soon. I thought, uh, how was Alaska? Fine. You seen igloos? No, just glaciers. Cold, huh? What? Must have been cold up there. Not really. Must have been a lot colder than in Sierra. We've been having a real scorch here. Oh? Yeah, it must have been in the hundreds. You want to take your coat off, Mom? No. What happened in here? Oh, me and Lee were sort of celebrating in Celebrating? This. Yeah. Well, Lee sold the screenplay. Or oh, a story, I mean. Lee did? Yeah. Not you? No. Him. You sold a screenplay? Yeah, we're, we're just finishing it up now. That's what we're doing here. Me and Lee are going out to the desert to live. You and Lee? Yeah, I'm taking off with Lee. <laughs> You're gonna go live with your father? No, we're going to a different desert, Ma. I see. <laughs> well, you'll probably wind up on the same desert sooner or later. What are all these toasters doing here? <laughs> oh, me and Lee had a kind of uh, a contest. Contest? Yeah. Lee won. Did you win a lot of money, Lee? Well, not yet, but it's coming in any day now. What happened to your shirt? Oh, I was sweating like a pig, so I took it off. <laughs> well, it's one hell of a mess in here, isn't it? Yeah, I got everything cleaned up for you, Mom. I, I just wasn't expecting you back so soon. I wasn't expecting to be back so soon either. What happened? Nothing. I just started missing all my plants. Oh. Oh, they're all dead, aren't they? <laughs> you didn't get much of a chance to water, I guess. Well, I was doing it, and then Lee came Yeah, well, I just distracted him a whole lot there, Marna. It's not his fault. Oh, well. That's one less thing to take care of, I guess. Oh, that reminds me. 
You boys will probably never guess who's in town. Try and guess. What do you mean, Mom? Take a guess. Someone very important has come to town. I read it coming down on the Greyhound. Somebody very important? See if you can guess. You'll never guess. <laughs> Mom, we're trying. Castle. The castle's in town. Isn't that incredible? Right now. Picasso's dead, Mom. No, he's not dead. He's visiting the museum. I read it on the bus. We have to go down there and see him. Oh, Mom! This is the chance of a lifetime. Can you imagine? We could all go down there and meet him. All three of us. Uh, I don't think I'm up for meeting anybody right now, Ma. I, I was going to... What's his name? The castle? The castle? You've never heard of the castle? Austin, you've heard of the castle. Mom, we're not going to have time. It won't take long. We'll just hop in the car and go down there. An opportunity like this doesn't come along every day. We're going to be leaving here, Mom! Oh. Yeah. You're both leaving. Well, we were thinking about that before. No, we are! We're both leaving. We got it all planned. Well, you can't leave. You have a family. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. I don't think Austin's cut out for the desert, do you, Mom? No, it's not. I'm going with you, Lee. He's too thin. Yeah, he's burning up out there. We're just going to finish the screenplay, and we're going to take off. That's the plan. That's what you said. Now, come on, Lee. Let's get back to work. Oh, I can't work under these conditions here. It's too hot. And we'll do it out in the desert. Don't be telling me what we're going to do. Don't shout in the house. I'm going to have to postpone the whole deal. I can't postpone it. It's gone past postponing. Now I'm doing everything you said. I'm writing out exactly what you tell me. Yeah, but you write along, see? It's a dumb storm. Two lame breeds chasing each other across Texas. That's what you said, right? I never said that. <laughs> I'm going to have to borrow some of your antiques, Mark. You don't mind, do you? Just a, a few plates and things, silverware. You don't have any utensils on the desert? No, fresh out. What are you doing? Well, some of these are very old. Bone china. No cut eating now my bare hands. It's not civilized. What are you doing? <laughs> We're making a deal! Can you borrow some of the plastic ones you said? I bring you plastic ones. Well, well, plastic ones. Not safe at all. See, what I need is something authentic to keep me in touch. Now it's easy to get out of touch out there. Don't worry, I'll get back to you. The desert's got the whole thing ready. You boys shouldn't fight in the house. Go outside and fight. I'm not fighting, I'm leaving. There's been enough damage done already. I'm clear out of here once and for all. All this town does is follow me and say, look, there's some house in there. I'm not letting that happen to me. Sell myself down the river. No, sir, me. I'd never be a hundred miles from nowhere than a dad for me. Tighten up. Come on! Stop! See? You see that? 
It's a savage thing to do. Yeah, well, don't you be telling me I can't kill him because I can. After this twist. Where's the I'm going to the desert. There's nothing stopping me. I'm going by myself to the desert. Well, I'm going to go check into a motel. I can't stand this anymore. Don't go yet. I can't stay here. This is worse than being homeless. I'll get everything fixed up for you, Mom. I promise to stay for a while. You're going to the desert. Just wait. It was the worst feeling being up there in Alaska, staring out a window. I never felt so desperate before. That's why when I saw that article on Picasso, I thought... Stay it here, Mom! This is where you live. I don't recognize it at all. <laughs> I'll make you a deal. You let me get out of here. Just let me get to my car, all right? Just give me a little head start and I'll turn you loose. Just give me a little head start, all right? <laughs> 